Hi, guess what I just did? Well, not just, but I did do this in the last week, and I've been sitting on this for like four or five days now, and I have not told Ivan or Megan that I have watched Demon Slayer. That's right, I watched the entire Demon Slayer, including the movie in between season one and season two. I have watched it all, and I binged it. And do you know why I binged this? It's because I saw it at Universal Studios Japan. They had this giant statue of Tanjiro, Seaweed, Miss Boy, and Big Titty Hashira. And I was like, what's this all about? And they even had a store full of like Demon Slayer stuff. And I was like, what's this about? I'm kind of intrigued. And everyone was like, oh, it's about this. I mean, you know, uh, his sister got turned into a demon. He's fighting demons and everything. And it's like really, really fun. It is a little bit bloody, but you will like it. I'm like, nah, I'm not a big person with all the blood and the gore and stuff. But I was like, you know what? I will watch it. So I did. Here we are. I just smacked my microphone. But anyway, so what I did was, as I actually took notes, and I never take notes during the anime watchings, and don't expect me to do a lot of these type of videos, because this was kind of like a one-off, but I took notes whilst I watched. I want to preface that I watched the dub version, and anytime there was a Japanese word written on screen, I had it set that it would translate automatically for me so I could see the English translation on screen like a normal human being. Uh, shout out country off again that right sometimes I'll talk about that later But anyway, let's let's just talk about my thoughts throughout season one. I Have these own bullets mind you Took a few episodes to get into it I like the fact that they spent a long time on training instead of boy boss overcomes challenges in five minutes and Then like I didn't take a whole lot of like thoughts in season one, but here we go. Whatever happened to that demon that was in the doctor's basement in the house that blew up? Really fun show so far. A bit too dark sometimes in terms of blood. Not really my thing. Baby Zeus is god tier when asleep. Nezuko finally does something at the end. So that was just like season one. Like I said, I didn't do a whole lot of notes for season one, but this is where we get to it. So now this is the movie, right? And I was like, ooh, I like the fire run. Oh no, he says gonna train all three of them. He totally dies at the end. Letha was all like, Nesuko was such a badass on the train. Uh, did we watch the same movie? She does something for five minutes and that's it. Same old, same old. And how dare they kill Ren Goku? He was daddy. That's so shitty. And then it ends. Pretty depressing movie. But I knew he would die as soon as he was said he would train all three of them. Like, bro, what a letdown. And that then Tanjo just loses his sword again. And if Beast Boy had not interrupted the demon, the demon would have sh died for sure. And honestly, I still think that. I th still think Gren Goku could have beaten that demon had uh, Beast Boy Inosuke didn't go and take the sword out and everything. Or, like, help take the sword. And then I finished up saying, ugh, I'm mad. Okay, I guess I should watch an episode of season two. I blame Lethal. And then we move on to season two. And I write them. And again, these are my thoughts as I'm watching the show. Like, every episode and stuff. What the hell? Season 2 is like a prequel to the movie. Episode 2 and still the train. I'm going to bed. I'm not liking my anime journey right now. I was frustrated that when Goku died. Because <laughs> I watched these episodes right after the movie, like at like 1am. So we basically watched the movie again with one extra episode that shows dead daddy going to the train, which is true. And then you're able to like skip some of the episodes because it's just the movie split up. Like one prequel episode of the movie and then the rest is like the movie. So the English dub is broken and no longer translates what's on screen in Japanese to English. I tried all the settings. It used to do it automatically and then it just completely forgot. Like they seriously just forgot to translate what's on screen in English. So a lot of the episode titles, when you know the, the little opening would show, like what episode name it was, I couldn't read it, which was great. And then like certain words on screen, couldn't read it. Shout out Crunchyroll. Good job, season two. Daddy with the three wives. Okay, so Nezuko finally got her glow up and was badass. And then she needed a lullaby like Hulk, <laughs> which is so true, guys. My favorite part that made me laugh was when baby Zeus is asleep and fights in front of Bora Boy. And he sees him for the first time and is like, Pikachu face, maybe you should just stay asleep forever. I actually laughed out loud. Like it made me like laugh and snort. And <laughs> Inosuke's like, uh, maybe you should just stay asleep forever. Cause like baby Zeus, Zenitsu is, you know, doing cool shit. By the way, I'm totally on this team of baby Zeus boy is like the top tier 
I have the three main guys, Tanjiro, Boy Boy, and Baby Zeus. Like, he's like the best. The best, I say. Although he pisses me off when he starts shrieking and crying and whining, but then he's like, Nezuko, my love, I will save you. And I'm like, yes! Anyway, it's fine. Okay. So then we move on. But then the hot demon doesn't die and her personality completely changes to a whiny brat because somehow her brother shows up because, you know, the brother and sister were like in one demon, I guess. Season two was half the length of season one. Daddy with the three wives lost his hand and I and now retires and I'm sad. I understand why they show us the demon's backstory, but the pacing is always executed poorly, in my opinion. Like five episodes of this big ass battle and then... Everything just stops and we get a 20 minute slow burn of the siblings backstory. I honestly don't care about them at all. Which is true, like I felt like the pacing was wrong and I understand why they want us to understand the demons and realize that they weren't all horrible at first and some of them at least weren't all horrible at first. But then, yeah, honestly I could do without the demon backstories. But the coolest part though was the mushroom cloud and then the, the, the credits just roll and it's like the music and the animation. So nice, so good! Anyway, now we're on to season three. The art is even better than season two in season three. Judging by the outro of the first episode, there is no baby Zeus or boar boy in this season. Instead, it'll be big titty chick and emo boy. I miss daddy with the three wives. Yep, I was right. The outro of episode one is the new intro. The English dub is fixed and is now showing the Japanese words in English on screen. I guess they messed up in season two. Shout out Country World for fixing their shit. And when I write down, I miss Butterfly Girl and Aquaman also. They were cool in season one. I'm referring to, um, you know, the insect Hashira and the water Hashira guy. So I think that this man that resembles the doll is Tanjiro's relative. At first I thought it was his dad, but that's impossible. But I also think this man is also demon number one because the same hair and all. And it's true, like one of the demon, like the first demon, like demon number one or, you know, upper rank demon number one. He looks like this Hashira. I'm just saying, like, I'm pretty sure, like, there's some tie-in here that that demon is the Hashira that used to be a, that, you know, they made into a doll, basically, and, you know, obviously the Hashira isn't the doll, but the doll is a replica, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, I think, I think. I don't know. No, no. Marichiro, aka Seaweed Hair Emo Boy, is actually more badass than I thought. I'm still not super fond of him. I hope he lives after taking out the upper rank, though. The best character of this season is either Big Titty Hashira Chick or Mohawk Wannabe Demon Hashira. The one, you know, who eats demons and his brother's a Hashira. That epi last episode, which was nearly one hour long, was a whirlwind. Nezuko not dying, which I'll be honest, I was quite, quite confused that she was going to die just like that. I was sad. But then when she survived the, th the sun, I thought Tanjiro was hallucinating and it was someone else. And when... Nezuko or whomever I thought was Nezuko would hug him. I thought they would they would kill Tanjiro or like try to stab him and he would stop hallucinating realizing that this person was actually trying to kill them and it wasn't Nezuko. But yeah, I thought he was hallucinating, but never mind. It turned out to be that she actually conquered the sun. I was like, what the fuck? But anyway. I'm glad all the Hashra people survived this time. Seaweed tits and Mohawk boy. I didn't like that baby Zeus and Boy Boy were barely in the season. I like that we finally found out what happened to the demon that was in the mansion that exploded in season one. See? Nice little tie-in. Contrary to what Lethal said about this season, it's about the same length as season two, given the longer episodes and such. Because he was all like, season three is shorter and it was shit. But if we compare season three to two, so much happens in two. First off, we get a training montage of the boys on their road to recovery. Tandril barely trains and is put into a big battle in season three. It seems cheap and it's honestly true. Like he didn't really seem to have like a whole lot of recovery time. And he was like just right back into it again. It's like, what happened? In season two you know like anyway i just thought like it was a bit cheap season three so moving on to season four bro what an intro hottie hashira is doing cool badass things we see them get a glimpse of that demon complex and i know the demon complex is actually called like the demon infinity castle whatever it is but for me it, just, it sounds cool if i say demon complex so that's what i'm referring to I'm glad baby Zeus and Boar Boy are back in the picture. I understand why they weren't in season three so other characters could shine more, but still, I didn't particularly like a majority of season three in comparison, which is true. Like, I understand you needed to, like, have them be in the background and not even in the season to let other characters show up, like Mohawk Boy and Big Titty Hashira and Seaweed Boy, and I get that and everything. 
I like that everyone is together and it seems like the Avengers where we finally have everyone involved. Daddy with the three wives is back. Yay! The intro and outro really got an upgrade. Even the art looks better than season three. Perhaps I was too harsh on season three, but I still didn't like it as much. Ah, uh, there are eyes everywhere. Clearly a lot of these Hashiras are gonna die. Bummer. Surely this season will end where the demons infiltrate the camp and there's gonna be fights left and right, right? Episode 7 starred the stupid glitch where it no longer translates on-screen Japanese words and just gave me subtitles even when I didn't ask for them. Get it together, Crunchyroll. And it's true, like, I literally had it so that it would just be, like, whenever words show up on screen in Japanese, I would see the English words and that was it. But for some reason, instead of doing that, it just gave me subtitles. I'm like, I didn't ask for subtitles. I don't even have subtitles turned on. I can hear. Anyway. And then, that glitch was fixed in episode 8. Seriously, I don't know what Crunchyroll is doing. And what a freaking episode! The music, the animation, oh my god, I literally write that OMG. And it ends just when everyone's falling in the demon complex, and then the most badass music plays as the credits roll. Holy shit, guys. It was so good! But like, then I started thinking about what happened in the episode, and I'm like, did bro really kill his entire family and children, meaning like the, the master of the mansion? He just blew everybody up. Everybody, like, he just murdered his innocent children. You didn't think he'd be like, no, I'm going to go and send you guys far away where no one can find you and everything, but no. Mm -mm. And then I continue and says, but what was in that letter to baby Zeus? And why is he acting this way? I sure hope he's okay. Man, I was really looking forward to this. Felt like the Avengers getting the band together. And I'm so glad so many mounted characters from the seasons were included in the ending. I bet you baby Zeus is about to have a glow up and I'm so ready and dude his eyes opened up and the music is playing I'm like yeah anyway and then like it just grows to credit and I'm like wait no I'm so excited I need to know what happens this was the shortest season and I've just looked and there won't be a season five but there will be three movies and I'm like give me them oh I actually write that in my notes and then my prediction is so like I said, a lot of them will die. I'm betting you that one of the brothers, either Demon Muncher or Wind Boy, will die saving the other one. I'm wondering if Nezuko or Tanjo will both survive. I feel like they will. Maybe not. Who knows? The music overall throughout all the seasons and the movie was fantastic. Like, honestly, the music was great. The animation was great. The voice acting was pretty darn good, I gotta admit. Some of the times I was like, you kind of annoy me, but... Yeah, like, at first, I didn't really like Tanjiro, like, all that much. I thought he was a whiny little bitch boy in the first few episodes. And it took a while to get used to him. But now, like, by season four, I really like Tanjiro. But for me, the best one is Baby Zeus. Uh, Zenitsu. I don't know why. I just really like him a lot. And Daddy with the Three Wives. Yes. <laughs> but these are my thoughts, guys, from Demon Slayer. I am... I This has been one of the most fun animes I think I've watched in a very long time. I really, really like, like, Free Run and Apothecary Diaries. Um, a Sign of Affection is really good. And there's a whole bunch of other episodes in animes I've watched, but, like, this was fun. This was fun. Like, this didn't... This may, hasn't made me so hyped for anything in a long time. Like, I'm really looking forward to these movies, and I, I even googled it. I was like, when are these coming out? But there's, like, nothing. There's no more information about them, because this stuff just came out, like, what, six months ago? So, yeah, I'm pretty sad. I, I need it now. I was like, yes! I was like, this is gonna be so great! Like, dude, I've been listening to, like, uh, Tanjo versus, like, Muzan. Uh, that track that plays when everyone's entering the Infinity Castle Demon Complex and it rolls to the credits. Like, I've been listening to that on repeat for about four or five days now because I finished the show, like, last Thursday on Halloween, actually. And then it is now Monday and I'm recording it now. And I've been listening to it on repeat since then. I am so freaking hyped. I'm gonna be honest with you. I kind of want to cosplay as one of these Demon Slayer characters. I just don't know which one yet. So yeah, anyway, these are my absolutely autistic thoughts <laughs> on Demon Slayer. Totally recommend it. And if you're still here, please consider giving a thumbs up to the channels. And we'll see you every Thursday night live for Body Pillow Talk. Okay, bye everybody.